Obesity most definitely is a disease. It was officially named a disease by Center for Medicare Services in February of 2006. So uh, the federal government and um, Medicare Services agree that obesity is a disease. It's something that we felt has been a disease for a long time, but was more officially named it recently. Uh, obesity leads to a lot of health problems, including diabetes, high blood pressure, um, sleep apnea or just not sleeping well at night, heavy snoring, uh, high cholesterol, um, early mortality, dying earlier than you otherwise would. Um, so it's a serious disease and it carries a lot of um, problems along with it and therefore it's very important to treat um, so that people can live longer, healthier lives. Uh, surgery is an option for people who uh, have a body mass index of 40 or higher and that translates to about 100 pounds overweight or more um, or a BMI of 35 and higher assuming they have weight related problems such as diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, sleep apnea or high cholesterol to name a few. So you need to have a serious weight related problem with a body mass index of 35 which translates to about 60 to 70 pounds overweight depending on your height. Uh, to qualify for the surgery. Many years ago, uh, the surgery was done through an open incision um, and uh, typically patients were in the hospital for five to seven days. Um, rates of wound infection were a bit higher. Nowadays, we do it through smaller incisions uh, and therefore just recovering from the surgery itself happens much more quickly and people are getting back to work more rapidly they have less pain associated with the surgery. That's probably been the main advance in how weight loss surgery is done, say in the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, in addition to that, we are constantly coming out with improvements in stapling technology and uh, instrumentation so that we have lower and lower risk of complications with the surgery. Uh, that together with more in-depth education prior to the surgery and support after the surgery leads to improved outcomes and that's how it's a lot better today than it used to be. I think every patient who has a gastric bypass or a gastric band or any of the other procedures we do for weight loss is always concerned first of all that they're going to lose the weight and secondly that they're going to maintain that weight loss and they're probably more concerned about the second one because our success rates are very high uh, in getting people to lose the weight. Maintaining the weight is also uh, quite high in terms of success, but nevertheless people are scared about that. Uh, and so we uh, strongly emphasize following dietary guidelines that emphasize healthy eating, small portion sizes uh, on a regular basis three times a day, avoiding drinking calories um, such as soda pop, even a lot of fruit juice or milkshakes, things like that, uh, and regular exercise. So it doesn't sound like rocket science, but if people adhere to those simple guidelines, which they learn to do, during the year after their surgery, uh, then they're very successful at maintaining the weight loss. It's not always easy to change your life in such a major way in terms of eating. People rely on eating for various things to comfort them or if they're anxious. Uh, and so we talk about strategies to overcome that sort of dependence on eating as well, in addition to having a smaller stomach and changing your eating habits and so forth. So, um, I think attending support groups, making sure you've got a supportive family, um, never giving up, just continuing to, to understand that this is a, a lifestyle change for good. For more information about this physician or to schedule an appointment, please call our referral line or visit notbiggerjustbetterhealth.com.